This is Grow Omaha Uncut, where you can watch our radio show, including what goes on in the commercial breaks. And be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. Well, good morning and welcome to the show. Jeff Beals here at your service. This is the only show in the metro area that talks about real estate, construction, business expansion, growth and development, fun things if you care about Omaha's future and making the city more vibrant and prosperous. We want to thank our sponsors for making this possible. They are Dingman's Collision Center with four metro area locations and d Roofing and Siding, the top-notch best roofer in the metro area for both commercial and residential roofs. And now, without any further ado, time to bring on my co-host, a man who is legendary in his real deal-making prowess and acumen, Trenton Maggot. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning, everyone. Oh, good morning. Happy spring. You know, we needed that rain last night to end wildfire season. Well, I think that the the pre-party, there's a gala last night at the new Kiewit Luminarium. Last night, they could have called it the Kiewit Illuminarium, Given all those uh, th- the the thunderstorms and the lightning, did you see the horizontal lightning? There, were, you know, I was I was kind of just sitting at the dining room table, sipping a margarita last night, doing a little bit of uh, reading on my laptop. And I live out west, as do you. And um, in our area, we didn't have too much of it, but but further east, apparently on the east side of Omaha, a lot more rain well, than we got out west. The, the, the sky was lit up. It was very. Kind I of heard pink. a lot of it's thunder. Kind of pink. And but it was like some some of the uh, horizontal lightning looked like trees. Some of it looked like um, forks. Mm-hmm. And I've never seen so much cloud to cloud electricity. It was so cool. Gosh, I should have. Sometimes during storms, I get the lawn chair and sit on the edge of the garage where I'm just close enough where you don't get wet, but you can still see the sky. I should have done that last night. So I talked to some friends that were at the the luminarium, and they said it was it was amazing. And um, I would highly recommend that people get on their uh, their their website and, and uh, sign up for the timed entry. Yeah, the first day of business for the brand new uh, $100 million Kiwit Luminarium is today. Uh, we're going to talk in the second segment today with Deb Ward. She is the executive director of the Omaha Convention and Visitors Bureau about the Luminarium, the impact that it will have on tourism in Omaha. We'll also talk to her about Steelhouse Omaha, which is opening in May. We'll talk about the two new riverfront parks and the fact that uh, hotels last year in Omaha had record revenue, all-time high revenue. But before we get into any of that, we have a restaurant review this week. Sarah Baker Hansen is the official reviewer of Grow Omaha Eats, the series of restaurant reviews that we run every other week. And and this week, Sarah reviewed Isla Del Mar. Uh, headline is, at Isla Del Mar, fun seafood comes with pops of bright flavor. Isla Del Mar is authentic Mexican seafood. The original location is at uh, 36th and Q in South Omaha. And just about a week ago, uh, the business opened a second location in West Omaha, 132nd and Center Northwest Corner in the same uh, strip center as Dave and Buster's. I've not yet tried Isla Del Mar uh, West location, but a couple of days ago, Thursday, I popped my head in and the owner happened to be there. Uh, she gave me a tour. First of all, huge uh, the the oh, restaurant yeah. the restaurant it's fifteen thousand feet yeah it's just it's one of the biggest restaurants you've ever seen in your life bars uh, it's like a couple bars colorful this they have a uh, um, what do they call it a pasteria is where uh, where you make uh, bread or something like that pasteria. what is that pasteria, pasteria. I'm close enough. Uh, then they also are going to have a fresh seafood to go counter there. It's not quite open as of last Thursday, but where you can buy, you know, carry out raw fresh seafood, take it home and cook it. So if you want to read the review, just go to growomaha.com. Click on Eats, E-A-T-S on the navigation bar. You can read that review that Sarah Baker Hansen wrote about Isla Damar, as well as all of our reviews. And of course, they are brought to you by Cheer Athletics. And Omaha is really fortunate to have one of only 12 cheer athletics locations in the world. Um, They started in Dallas, and they are the number one premier all-star cheerleading gym where you teach competitive cheer. They do competitions and all that. It's definitely the Cadillac of the business. And if you want to check out the facility, gorgeous 
facility they have in Omaha. It's in Papillion at uh, just southwest of Highways 50 and 370. I'm excited to see Isla de Mar out west. Uh, we went to the one on 36th, uh, north of Q, I believe, and um, it was good, I remember. It, but it is big and bright, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how they do out west. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I, I was blown away by the tour, and then uh, I'll have the family out there for, for dinner or something within the next couple few weeks and, and give that a try. Well, Trenton, I guess uh, without any further ado, we should go into our news of the week. It is, as always, brought to you by Eagle Mortgage. Holly Schneiderwind and her team at Eagle Mortgage do a very good job of listening to their customers, figuring out what they really need, working very hard to match them up with the right loan. That's the nice thing about using a mortgage broker like Eagle Mortgage. They can shop a lot of banks instead of being tied to just one. That allows them, as I said a minute ago, just to get you the best solution. And I don't care whether you're looking for the conventional, the FHA, the VA loan, whatever. Um, They'll help you with all of those, get you that pre-approval letter. Um, The housing market is still very interesting, shall we say. There's there's still not enough houses out there. So while not quite as crazy as it was a couple years ago, it's still kind of crazy. And so you want that Eagle Mortgage uh, security and uh, feelings of safety behind you as you go into the house hunting rat race. It takes a a good couple of years to take a farm and turn it into a uh, single family development and that that's assuming that you have utilities to the to the development then you've got the infrastructure and you got the financing you got the grading that's taking uh, even longer these days with the, the planning yeah there's just no one to build these these subdivisions and these houses the labor shortage and construction yeah. is terrible Well, let's get into this news, Trenton. Uh, Beginning April 24th, Farnham Street from 48th to Saddle Creek Road will close till traffic until late November. And this is all for a very good and exciting reason. It is to make accommodations for the future University of Nebraska Medical Center Saddle Creek Campus, which is going to be a a, a massive shot in the arm uh, to Omaha and the state of Nebraska. I see how you did that. But it uh, and that was completely accidental, no pun intended. Uh, and also in preparation for UNMC's expansion, City of Omaha plans to negotiate with business owners near Saddle Creek Road and Leavenworth Street to acquire property necessary for road and sidewalk improvements. They're not ruling out the use of eminent domain, but basically this Farnham Street closure, the work at Saddle Creek and Leavenworth, this is all necessary because the new Saddle Creek campus, eventually Project Next. And uh, the UNMC Administration Tower, which will break ground here pretty soon, probably going to create a hell of a lot of traffic. And so yeah. we have to make sure that things move through there and, and are safe for you know pedestrians and all that sort of thing. So there's going to be a lot of changes. I guess they're also looking to make sure it doesn't flood. Well, and that is an ongoing problem on that Saddle Creek corridor. I mean, after all, there's a reason why the road is called Saddle Creek. The creek is in a box culvert underneath um, the surface of the road. And then also very related to all of that, the World Herald about a week ago had a real nice article about Project Next. That's the multi-billion dollar project on a 7.5 acre site on the southeast corner of Saddle Creek and Farnham. They've been grading it. They removed the Monroe Meyer Institute and the old J.P. Lord School. They're still doing a bunch of foundational work. At any rate, um, the article said that uh, things are going well there. We're still waiting on a bunch of uh, Washington, D.C. bureaucratic garbage before we can actually or? start. Yeah. Well, it, 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 there's or department. Funding, I guess. Yeah. Department of Defense, Health and Human Services and Veterans Administration are all in it. And they all have some decisions still to make. It looks really good. Omaha's uh, almost certainly going to be the very first location for these five disaster preparedness hospitals around the country. So it's it's all looking good. In fact, the article had a quote, demolition and site preparation funded by philanthropists were completed for significantly less than anticipated, allowing contractors to do more to create a structural base than expected. So slow. A lot of this is federal government dependent. It's going to happen uh, from what the experts are saying, but we have to be patient. You know, a lot of the things that the United States government funds, I, I think that this one is important. <laughs> I would I would, I would, would argue it's more important than a lot of them. So the former Nobby store in Bel Air Plaza, 120th and West Center Road, will be converted into an indoor entertainment center with a full restaurant and bar. 
Worley Enterprises, which has prehistoric putt, medieval putt, uh, developing fat putter downtown at 10th and Capitol. Well, anyway, that company bought the 32,000 square foot building. Todd Schneidwin and Brian Hartman from our office at NAINP Dodge represented the buyer, Worley Enterprises, by the way. Uh, Fat Putter, their new project at 10th and Capital, is supposed to open around May, I believe. And then once that business opens, they can start working on Nobbies. And they're thinking probably a 2024 opening in which Nobbies becomes an indoor entertainment center. Well, for Michael Worley, it seems like he's, he's got a good thing going with about five of these indoor putting places. They cater to, to families, and the, the, the newer ones are going to have bars and restaurants and things like that. So he's really entering a whole new um, era in his business because it's one thing when you have one or two employees there with, with indoor golf and that kind of stuff and snacks. It's another thing when you have a full staff and you have a bar and restaurant. Full bar and restaurant, yeah. But, but, I, but it's exciting and good for him. You know, that, that Nobby's building is like 30,000 feet or so, and uh, there's a lot he can do in there. Well, yeah, it's, it's really cool when you think about the explosion of indoor entertainment, because just last week on the show, we talked about Spare Time Omaha, which is going into the 50,000 square foot former Gordman store, bowling lanes and all this sort of thing. And then also there's a another business called Foling Warehouse, Foling, F-O-W-L-I-N-G, Foling Warehouse. It's a mashup. Bowling with an F. Yeah, it's a mashup of football and bowling. And they plan to open a location in an existing building at 5585 North 90th. That's basically the 90th and Fort area. But essentially, instead of rolling a bowling ball down the lane, you chuck a football at the bowling pins and knock them over with a football. This is a real thing, ladies and gentlemen. This location will have 30 foaling lanes and existing locations of foaling warehouse are in Michigan, Ohio, Georgia, Indiana, and Texas. So this is a franchise, and, and kudos to our friend Dan Fishburn, who's a commercial real estate agent. We usually don't tout our friendly competitors, but we have a lot of friendly competitors. And he's been working on this for a couple of years. His client, Mark, um, stuck with him, and uh, I showed him some spaces. And I never thought I'd see it happen, but it is going to happen. I, I know some of these have uh, bands, and they have a bar, and, and we'll have live music. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, so those those are three. And then we've also talked about in the past about uh, Smash Park, uh, pickleball-based entertainment Smash facility. Smash Park has broken ground. Out of Des Moines. Yeah, and I, uh, and I think I sent you some pictures. They're, they're, they're grading out at um, Southport West, and that's right as you go into Cabela's to your left. But they're going whole hog on the, the four-acre site, 25,000 square foot. And then next will be a home to suites uh, next door to that. But there's still a lot of land out there. And then um, also, if you're driving in, instead of taking a right when you're about to take a right, instead of going to Cabela's, that will be a Panda Express. And then another indoor entertainment center, indoor outdoor, that's planned for the area, Chicken and Pickle, um, out of Kansas City with multiple locations nationwide, uh, plans on coming to Omaha as well. So we're going to have a lot of these big uh, blockbuster entertainment centers. Very fun, very cool, very exciting. Going to take our... First break of the hour, and when we come back, we're going to bring on Deb Ward. She's the head of the Omaha Convention and Visitors Visitors Bureau. Going to talk about uh, Kiwit Luminarium, Steelhouse Omaha, the downtown parks, hotel revenue up last year, all sorts of tourism and convention stuff. It'll be interesting. Stay with us. You're listening to Jeff and Trenton on Grow Omaha, brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and DNM Roofing and Siding on News Radio 1110 KFAB. Your vehicle is important. It gets you where you need to good go. Good to go. <coughs> She's okay. Okay. <clears throat> What's your relationship, Mr. Safety is your priority. To make sure your vehicle is as safe as it was prior to an accident, bring it to Dingman's for proper, safe, and certified repairs. All right. You know, you were surprised when 906 rolled around. We've been voting yeah. It reminded me. Uh, Becca's friends with 
Saturday Night Live, Daryl Hammond. Yeah. Be sometimes actor on now, voice guy after part of it. I remember, I remember who he is, yeah. Yeah. Pressure washer for something. And Becca told me, he said, Hammond said, the attitude of Saturday Night Live was we don't go on the air at 11 30 on Saturday night because we're ready. We go on the air because it's 11 30 on Saturday night. <laughs> and we have to. And it's, it's not because we're ready. <laughs> it's not because we're ready. <laughs> That's right. We're never ready. And they truly do that live, don't they? Yeah. That show, they've always well, there's, there's probably a 10 second delay. I know, but it's like, yes. not a, it's not like a tape premiere. It's not a tape that's live. Yeah. No, I know what you're yeah. saying. Like the late night shows, like they do a tape that's live on, on those shows. Yeah, they, they tape those around. They, they act like they're live, but they're really yeah. tape. Amy says they have to engage during the uh, uncut version. It makes better radio. Even though I'm preparing for the show to talk to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> everybody, everybody's used to that. You, you go to dinner and you see a family of six just on their phones. I, I, I cracks me up when you see that. I mean, literally, if you see four more people at, at the table, they just like the last, the last meal I had at Venice Inn. I had a, one of their older I waiters. I that place, by the way. I do too. Um, they had one of their older uh, servers as a, as a waiter. He'd been waiting tables probably for 50 years. But there was a little severe weather in the area, and I was sending a text, and he chastised me. He says, it is time for dinner with your friends. And I said, oh, there's severe weather in the area, so I kind of, my job. Like, and who, who's the waiter and who's the customer? Yeah. Buddy? You know what? Own no. business. He was very nice. I didn't, he, he didn't offend me. Mm. But, I mean, that's old school. It's the way it should be. I'm thinking old school is he would just treat you like a king if you're a customer well, and not question. Well, old school, we weren't, didn't have our noses stuck in stupid yeah. devices. And I say that as a guy who can't stand it when you, I find, every once in a while, Steph and I will be, we'll both check something, we're like, oh, we're, we're doing it. <laughs> we're both on the yeah. phone. But, um, Venison. That was a fun place to go. The only problem was every once in a while you'd have a lunch appointment there. Yeah. Those on Saddle Creek and no, no, uh, 69th and Pacific where the Peep and the sports bar. Here we go. And you'd be like just gut bombed the rest of the day. What was the Italian one that was done? I have to think about that. I have to think about that one. Salvatore's radio and podcast. And welcome back to the show. Jeff Beals and Trenton Maggot at your service. The show is brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and D&M Roofing and Siding. D&M Roofing and Siding recently did their annual uh, giveaway a roof for a veteran day in which they choose a worthy veteran and uh, provide that person with a free roof as a way to uh, thank that veteran and all veterans for their service. Just love what DNM Roofing does. DNMRoofing.com. Well, we're going to talk about convention and, and tourism. Um, it's one of our favorite subjects to talk about because A, it's fun, and and B, it brings in a lot of money uh, for Omaha with, without a lot of cost. And we have with us an expert, our good friend Deb Ward, the executive director of the Omaha Convention and Visitors Bureau. Good morning, Deb. Good morning, fellas. How you been? Good. It's good to have you back on the show. I was looking at the calendar, and, and this is hard to believe, but it's been a several years since we've interviewed you on Grow Omaha. Well, we had a little thing called the pandemic, and, and maybe that impacted us a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it took a little bite out of your business probably about as much as any during yeah. that period of time. Yeah, no kidding. So, so Deb, um, I do have to talk to you, though, when we speak about the business side. Uh, recently read a couple weeks ago that Omaha hotels not only have recovered quite nicely from the pandemic, but last year ha- they had their all-time greatest revenue ever. And, in and higher than uh, 2019. Oh, much higher than 2019. Yeah, ho- Omaha hotel revenue hit $251 million in, in 2022, up 25% from 2021 and and as you mentioned before the pandemic in 2019 it was a fairly average year for Omaha hotels the revenue was two uh, 219 million so quite a jump and everyone says well that's because the prices are higher well and that is part of it absolutely and we have more um, hotels excuse me and we also have more hotels places we, to stay 
we don't have any more hotels. Basically, the supply has not increased maybe 0.02% or something like that. You know, when we lost, like, the big um, big hotel at 72nd and Grover, I always still call it the Holiday Inn, right? But Holiday it, it Inn Central. Right. <laughs> We lost that, but but a couple more smaller hotels are going up in those positions. So basically, supply hasn't increased very much. So revenue, or I mean, um, price for a, an average hotel room in Omaha did go up, but so did demand. We had about a 9% increase in demand over 2021. So it's a little bit of both. So, Deb, is that uh, primarily a business uh, driven, or is it uh, convention, visitors, weekend, travel driven? Yeah, you know what? You're, it's it's leisure driven. Um, it's it's families coming in. It's couples coming in. It's it's girlfriend getaways. It's guys getaways. It's a huge increase in leisure demand. In fact, when you talk to the airport about um, last year, they looked out in the, into the concourse and they saw a completely different audience than they had seen before. Typically, business travelers, right, and convention travelers. Nope, they saw a bunch of families in the airport. So that pent up demand. And all of that money we saved during the pandemic, it's, it's still making uh, an impact. People are traveling. And the, the more events we get, when, when, when the zoo gets a new attraction and expands, when Steelhouse Omaha opens up, now Lum, the, the, the Luminarium open today, all these things add. Can, can you feel the effects of that when, when you know, there's a big concert in town? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, Luminarium, as you mentioned, opens today. Steelhouse Omaha opens mid-May. And then you've got the river pro- the, the rest of the Riverfront Park likely opening in, in mid-August. From a tourism perspective, even the announcement of these things is making an impact for us. You know, all of the current growth and anticipated growth makes our city a more appealing destination, you know, for leisure travelers, for convention and event groups. And we're so excited because we have a brand new city to sell. You know, it's been a while <laughs> since the city has had this much, seen this much growth in the downtown area. This I mean, isn't, it's, this it's isn't your father's years. Omaha, I guess you could, you could say. The, um, Excuse me? This isn't your father's Omaha. It's a new no, it's even a new from five years ago, right? Twenty years ago was when CHI Health Center was built. We are a relatively young convention destination when you think about it that way. But that's really been the biggest development. Then the stadium, then we've had downtown. This is just like a huge surge of development downtown. And and you know when you're the organization that's dedicated to promoting and selling the city, having a new product to sell is very exciting. <laughs> so I'd be remiss to to not bring up your familial relationship with uh, your favorite <laughs> nephew. He says you're his favorite aunt, and, th- and that would be Joel Ward of uh, Twist of Fate Estate Sales, along with his w- gl- gorgeous wife, Tashelle, who happens to be at 12504 V Street in Oak Hills uh, today and tomorrow for another sale. So check that estate sale out. But uh, what's your earliest memory of uh, Joel Ward? I don't even know who you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> no, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, that's kind of what I say about him. <laughs> I love Joel. He's actually like my, my little brother, to be honest with you. I grew up in a huge family. Uh, I've got 12 siblings, and Joel is the oldest son of my oldest brother. Wow. And, and, he, and he and I were, well, he, I'm a lot older than him, but we feel like we're we're up around the same age, so yeah. Excellent. All right, he's, we, we'll, he's already texted me this morning. That's, <laughs> enough, that's enough on Joel. Let's get back to the show. Back to regularly scheduled programming. Uh, we've got Deb Ward from the Omaha Convention and Visitors Bureau with us. Deb, with the Kiwit Luminarium opening today, um, we, we've heard things like this would be the type of attraction that would draw people from 500 miles. What's your assessment of that? Is that true? And and how uh, how, how can we take advantage of that new attraction? Absolutely true. When you think about it, it's such a unique space. And, you know, we call it, but it's called the Luminarium, but it really does illuminate the riverfront now. You know, we've had restaurants in there that, that have come and gone, and, and you know, there's, there's Bob the Bridge is down there. But this actually illuminates everything and gives people yet another reason uh, to go down to the riverfront. So it's, it's just awesome. So earlier, Deb, you talked about how the increase in 2022 – uh, lodging revenue setting a record was really leisure driven. What do we? Uh, how are we coming with the return of both just transient business travelers and then eventually you know conventions? I mean, because you know we obviously love citywide conventions; they're hard to get. How are we coming with those business and convention 
uh, revenue sources? You know, we're making headway. Um, Based on our booking pace here in Omaha, we anticipate a full recovery in group business, convention, and event business this year. But understand, we book three to five years out. So we've got kind of this long window where we're looking at the pace of business and and how we're booking. Um, When you look at 2019, our team booked about 161 meetings and events for about $147 million. Last year, we secured about 147 pieces of business um, for about $136 million. So we're this close to being back to pre-pandemic levels. Hey, one other thing I want to throw out there before we let you go, Deb. Um, the, the, the Steelhouse Omaha and Kiewit Luminarium as attractions make a lot of sense. But I tell you, ever since the Gene Leahy Mall opened downtown, um, even in the dead of winter, I've been blown away by the activity level that I see on it, especially now that the weather has warmed up. And then you think about adding, you know, the other two parks. I don't know if people travel to another city because there's a park, but the whole downtown area or the whole downtown atmosphere, the vibe, vibe, if you will, seems to be a lot different than it was a year ago. Are, are, are there ways, and if so, how are there ways that you can capitalize on that on, on attracting more people, especially given the fact that so many of our hotels and attractions are downtown. You know what? We just we just had a group of ten CEOs from national associations from Chicago in the city last week, and I'm talking everything from the National Association of Urban Planners to the National Association of Archivists. These groups never would have seriously entertained Omaha before. Um, last week they were blown away. And part of it is that open space and they can see activity. When you have an active downtown, you have a successful downtown, and that's appealing to people who want to bring their convention or their event to the city because they want an active place for their attendees. Okay, I, I guess I lied. One last thing, super fast. Okay. <laughs> uh, you have a new office. Tell us about that. We do. It's so exciting. You know, we've uh, in. During the pandemic, we gave up our office space to save money. Um, we've been looking, and we are now in Midtown Crossing. It's a wonderful space, easy access from anywhere in the city. We're so surprised. It takes me, I live in Papillion. It, it takes me 12 minutes from my house to get to my office. Um, it's easier access for our partners who want to pull up and visit us. Um, that is our administrative office, however. We still have our, our Omaha Visitor Center in that downtown 10th Street corridor at 10th and Farnham. So that's where the visitors can go and get all of their information. But, yeah, we love it. Oh, that's awesome. That's great, Deb. Thank you so much. This was uh, well overdue, and I appreciate you bringing us up to speed on so many Convention and Visitors Bureau-related subjects. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, guys, for having me. Appreciate it. Our pleasure. Deb Ward, head of the Omaha Convention and Visitors Bureau, going to take our middle-of-the-show break for the news. You're listening to Jeff and Trenton on Grow Omaha, brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and D&M Roofing and Siding on News Radio 1110 KFAB says they like working with a so, local company. So when are we going to start getting uh, ad home revenues home. for you know, this? Uh, the <laughs> we're getting a free dinner, dinner, dinner out of it, I just saw. Oh, okay. Uh, all, uh, uh, all I know is there's a lot of free advertising for this. And I can hear you're not an investor with them yet, are you? A lot of free advertising for a company you don't own. I hope it's like Mahogany Grill or something like that. We need to talk about that. We're the guys who sold more businesses for okay. more yeah, money sure. than anybody in Nebraska. Okay. I have a call question. I'm not Corp. sure about it. Do you guys need a caucus? Hi, it's Gary Sandler okay? here for Getchman Heating and Air Conditioning. Okay. It's fine. Bring in okay. the savings with Getchman Heating and um, Air Conditioning. Right now, save up to $3,500 when you purchase a new heating and cooling oh, yeah, system. Sure Ensure your home is prepared for warm oh, summer and cold weather. None. Okay, yeah. I just want to get sure. Yeah. It used to be an issue. Yeah, I couldn't. Yeah. Not anymore, though. Yeah. The way you have your deal with station. We'll be honest what we're talking about here. We pay for the show. Surely, I know they should. Pay us. Yeah, you think, right? But the good thing about that is we can talk about whatever we want to try and control his friends. Yeah. Damn right. <laughs> yeah, because I could. Yeah, because if it was a regular show, we couldn't take, uh, Trenton couldn't accept a dinner uh, for advertising. I couldn't. Since it's a paid show, we can. And I was joking about it. <laughs> But 
course, you don't. You love these people so much. You'll probably end up taking them out to dinner. Is yeah, that's right. Yeah. You're probably you're probably going to buy them a twenty thousand uh, dollar billboard. Jeff, uh, do you ever get that not so fresh feeling? <laughs> See, we can talk about anything. <laughs> hey, you know, you were talking last week about whether. You know, Attorney, interviews and, and see stuff like that. That's good. Yeah. You know, in addition to everything that's else going on, they have to contend with allegations. How much interviewing should we be doing? Oh, yeah. 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 And, yeah. Yeah. and I was just going to say, yeah, with assets to that, that's the kind of stuff. That was good. That was good. That should be doing. Good, clean, lots of lots yeah. of topics yeah. in a short period of time. And, uh, you know, and the occasional not all, of course, yeah. the mayor. Yeah. When if, we, if we get somebody running the chain. <laughs> yeah, when we have the big, yeah, like when, when like Jay or one of the big real estate developers comes on or mayor or whatever, yeah. then 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 I like doing the whole long format. Because yeah, Corey's out of town and you've taken over the role, or you know, I was just making a that was just a personal opinion comment. Hey, that's that's more opinion than even Scott. Damn right, yeah. we need that. Right? Yeah, well, I'm just saying. Yeah, I mean, I think. Deb, and of course, Deb sounds good too. Yeah, it helps time. that she was an anchor on uh, TV. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Yeah, but seriously, uh, you don't get too many. You don't get too many organization heads that speak as clearly as no. Deb does from all those years of being on well, television. That's that's why your job path in medium-sized markets usually is. TV. She was a long time in TV. Yeah, they yeah. got they got to move. But in the, advance, you got to move city. But right? they all they all go to. Yeah, basically, you get known by being on TV or radio, <sighs> and then you cash that into a public relations. Right. Usually, you know, the next step is you're head of marketing or public relations, or you're the spokesperson. Right. And you make more money. Well, that's after you have to uh, MC like 800 galas and and charitable little things for nothing. I tell you what. They, I don't think they get paid for those, do they? My my. I guess, my guess is that I think for the TV and radio, don't they just see it as a way to promote the TV and the radio station? Or maybe they get a little honorarium or something. There's so many industries that eat their, eat their people. But the thing is, there's, it, MCing is kind of fun. It's kind of fun to, I do it once in a while. It's kind of fun to MC events, you know, because everyone's always in a good mood and, you know, people get awards and, and, and what, 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 is there any joke or anything that you've done? Sunday, just like, you're like, I wish you would have said that. I doubt, Jeff. I doubt you. Would. <laughs> I would have. <laughs> you know. You cannot say it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Trent has had a few. <laughs> you know, I would say that there's one MC in event that I wish I, we, I would have never accepted. Remember when we did that District 66 one? Those were And the microphones went the VV. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it was so discombobulated. It was discombobulated. The microphones wouldn't work and something else would happen. And I just remember at the time thinking, God, if I could go back in time and say no to this. Yeah. <laughs> if I could go back in time and say no to this, I will. They didn't give us a lot of direction. So then, basically... Ever since that, I've said no to almost every single MC that, that people want me to do because it's going to be very organized. Yeah, like the one I, I always do the NP Dodge Residential Company Awards. I love that one because I know that company yeah. well, and and I get to be up there with like with Nate the Dodge who I know well, yeah. and 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 it's just fun. There's a good feeling in the air, and I, I know half the people. Uh, well, yeah, that's I know half the agents natural. to begin with. Yeah, I just like that one. I like that one. Um, that one's kind of fun. There are some. Trust me. I did. I I emptied some things, but remotes are the one that I have my favorite story. Oh, remotes are great. When something goes wrong or what? Or like you hear people, like, you know, the, the 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 producer and the talent on site are talking, and they accidentally they're on the radio. <laughs> yeah, people. God walk damn up it, Roger! <laughs> people walk up to you, start talking to you, and say, "I'm on the air." Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, I talk to you in a second. Well, I, I used to do that to Gary because uh, remember the the Big Red Breakfast. Yeah. They would be there every week for Big Red Breakfast, and I would go to the Big Red Breakfast. And I used to love to like try and distract Gary and Jim while they were on the air, but you couldn't really distract those guys. They're undistracted. Yeah, after a while, you can pretty well shut up. They're too good. Yeah. There's a few times where I've gotten Jeff 
When he looks over and my shirt's off. Well, the day you that. took your shirt off, and were you there that day? I never was there. I was here. No, I mean, were you uh, were you there here in the studio the day that Trent took his shirt off? I was that before remember. you came back? I think it was before. Should I take my shirt off now? No, because the, the Big Red Breakfast is over. It, this one has nothing to do with Big Red Breakfast. Oh. This is just Trent is talking about distracting me. Oh. I'll put my hand on his leg. No, the best when I put my hand on the leg of a guest who like doesn't know me very well. Yeah. That's always a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, people like Radio 1110 KFAB and KFAB.com and I heard radio. And welcome back to the show. Jeff Beals sitting next to Trenton Maggot. We are brought to you by d and Roofing and Siding and Dingman's Collision Center. They have four metro area locations and nobody does a better job of making cars just like new than Dingman's Collision Center. It doesn't matter if it's a little fender bender or a big accent, they work on all of them. And uh, they also have mechanical services as well. So thanks to Dingman's for making the show possible. It's time for the Commercial Real Estate Development Spotlight of the Week, which is brought to you by Noddle Companies. You guys know Noddle Companies. A lot of times, uh, Jay Noddle, uh, head of the company, will come on the show and talk to us about various Noddle Company projects. And they've got some blockbuster ones like Exarban Village and Builders District, Steel Ridge, uh, Nebraska Medicine Campus at Village Point. Today, we're going to talk about River's Edge. River's Edge, Trenton, is where? Council Bluffs. Council Bluffs, right on the Missouri River. Beautiful artwork, beautiful beautiful landscaping. They've done a great job with it. It's at the uh, eastern foot of the Bob Carey Missouri River Pedestrian Bridge, right close to Interstate 480, where that um, Iowa Department of Transportation is doing that massive uh, interchange upgrade, which will make River's Edge even more accessible than before. Anyway... River's Edge, cool project. It's called The Terrace. It is a social enterprise cafe dedicated to inclusion, advocacy, community, and philanthropy. It's being developed uh, with uh, and by Trivium Life Sciences. This is an Iowa nonprofit that helps people with developmental and intellectual disabilities, mental illnesses, uh, uh, brain injuries, this sort of thing. And so this group, Trivium Life Services, is involved in making this terrace. So it's going to be open. It'll be kind of a coffee shop, food, breakfast, lunch. And the actual address is 4201 Rivers Edge Parkway, but that's I believe in that uh, three-story office building um, that's right there in River's Edge. Where Iowa West Foundation is. Yeah, Iowa West Foundation is there. And then we've talked about this in the past, but construction is supposed to start pretty soon, I believe, on a really cool recreation um, attraction on River's Edge. Like it would have like a, a zip line and rappelling. It's going to be like really tall. You it's can like climb up climbing, on it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that that's going to be there as well. So so River's Edge will only continue to get better and better. I've also seen plans for some more multifamily to be added in that area. So so we'll keep an eye. That's going to continue to become a better and, and, and a better place on the far western edge of Council Bluffs. And my friends, that is your weekly Noddle Companies commercial real estate development spotlight. If you want to learn more about Noddle Companies, uh, just go to noddlecompanies.com or um, Noddle Company's Facebook page will take care of it as well. Well, if you are a subscriber to our newsletter, uh, you noticed that the big story this week was a look back at kind of Grow Omaha topics for the first quarter of the year. Hard to believe we're already in the second quarter. Year's flying. 2023, moving fast. So we thought it might be fun just to take a couple minutes and share with you um, the big story topics. And by the way, if you're not getting the Grow Omaha newsletter, you're really missing out. Shame on you. You can get it two ways. One, send an email to news at growomaha.com and just put newsletter in the subject line. Or you can go to growomaha.com, click on market report. You can sign up for it there and read every single market report that we've ever produced going it back two years. It takes about two minutes to sign up and you get a lifetime of free education, free market reconnaissance, and you can impress your friends. And a lot of joy. So the topics that were in the big story for first quarter development projects, uh, the first one was news about big tech companies. And we start with Google. This was back in January. Google announced that it would expand its Northwest Omaha data center, northwest of 114th and State Street, 
adding 187 acres to the existing 270 acres before they even built the first building. Um, so that's that's getting really big now. Think, so, of, think about Omaha, and this isn't every city where Google comes in and builds these huge data centers and facilities. That it's it's got to do with a lot of factors. You you know, well priced utilities, well priced land, workforce, and and so we're just lucky to have all these data centers. If you count the Northwest Omaha Papillion and Council Bluffs Google data centers, the Omaha Metro is home to the largest Google operational presence anywhere in the United States. Then meanwhile, another big tech company, Amazon, during the first quarter of this year, opened that massive regional fulfillment center at Highway 50 and 370 in Papillion. The next big story to come out of the first quarter of this year was the official groundbreaking for Mutual of Omaha's tower, 44 stories, 800,000 square feet. Construction is now in full gear. In fact, this week, Trenton, um, drilling has started. They started drilling. Of course, you know, you have to drill down to bedrock, and they've been drilling these tubes and filling them with rebar and concrete. These pilings will eventually hold up the skyscraper, which will, in 2026, be 677 feet tall. Wow. Union Omaha pro soccer team during the first quarter announced uh, its hope and intention of building a $100 million, 10,000 seat stadium um, somewhere on the north side. Uh, The project could depend, at least in part, in some uh, public funding that remains to be seen. That soccer team, of course, is currently playing at Warner Park where the AAA Omaha Storm Chasers Professional Ball Club has played. The exact site for a Union Omaha soccer stadium has not yet been publicly identified. If there's demand for it, I think it's great. But that's one thing that will be very interesting to see if they can pull off and when. During the first quarter, Nebraska Crossing owners said they hope to expand the popular Gretna property by up to 1,000 additional acres, going after big-time name-brand retailers. Um, There's talk about a regional youth sports facility, water park, hotels, uh, more restaurants, and uh, uh, it would be a pretty, pretty cool project. We know... um, Trenton and I are pretty close with Nebraska Crossing, and I think you can you can say for sure that whatever happens with that project, it's going to be pretty cool. They're going to do some pretty cool stuff and, and, there. And what they've done to that in the last ten years is is amazing, from from landscaping to to tenant mix and 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 the crowds, and um, so we're excited to see that there's, there's plenty of land around there, but they've got to attract. The state has to work with them. Hopefully, we'll see a, a, another uh, off ramp from I eighty. And uh, there's huge potential in Gretna. And finally, the first quarter brought us an update on the Crossroads project. Sewer work has been completed. Street paving is scheduled to begin in May. And right now, the developers of Crossroads are working with the city of Omaha to improve uh, both Dodge and Cass Street to accommodate the uh, large numbers of, of people and cars that will be going into and out of that development. First building should start going up in early 2024. Yeah, I, I think that we'll see a lot of um, most of the infrastructure done uh, by the end of this year. And we're going to take our final break of the hour. When we come back, it'll be the Turner Construction Lightning Round. Got the list right here. Lots of stuff you want to hear. So don't go away. This is the grand, exciting finish to the show coming up. You're listening to Grow Omaha, brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center, DNM Roofing, and Turner Construction. Back in a moment on News Radio 1110 KFAB. When you're in the mood for some of the country's greatest hits. Yeah, I mean, I remember that. Unless you're a huge country fan, yeah, there's not a ton of concerts to go to at CHI Health Center lately. That's a concern. That's a concern. Why are they not getting? Are they getting out? Are we getting outbid by Lincoln and different places in Kansas City and Iowa? <laughs> Kansas Iowa City State, wouldn't maybe. preclude them from playing Omaha. Lincoln no. would. Like, yeah, but like like uh, Ed Sheeran's going to Kansas City and playing Arrowhead Stadium. I'm like huge. I mean, if they're playing seventy, eighty thousand. Yeah, seat stadiums. If they're doing that, they're probably not going to do it all the time. You have that side of the coin, and then they get some Baxter, but those are shows that are actually some of them could fall into a steel house. Okay. Steel house is going to be really interesting because when you think about the types of shows that a lot of the, the younger crowd likes, they're steel house crowds. You know, they can't fill. They can't feel, fill a CHI or a so you critical got, bank. you got arena. slow down, then you have the, the, the Astro, or what's what's the... Oh, Admiral. 
Admiral with oh, like the old Sokol. Yeah. yeah, so the Admiral. And then the Astro is going to be at City Center in La Vista. Yeah. So, um, then you got the Baxter Arena. Then you get, not to mention the Ralston Arena. Right. Um, and there's a lot of other, you know, the music. Well, and then you get into the summer. And well, Steel, and Steel House is being programmed by Live Nation, isn't it? Awesome so that'll be a huge boost for them. The but I, I, I just hope people go out and support all these. Uh, well, you know, I thought, you know, because I knew he, he first broke when I was in high school and college. But, you know, I saw they had Elvis Costello go into the <laughs> Steel House. He's coming. Yeah, in September. And that's how old is That's he an older. Be. Yeah, because normally still has early sixties. Still also probably attract a lot of like college and twenty somethings, but that's a good but now, like recruiting a, a bigger crowd, he's, older crowd. Elvis Costello is an interesting yeah. niche. Because he still gets you know, some younger Does crowds, he? yeah, as well as let's get that fixed. People Talk, we're back. Talk back to News Radio 11. Get serious. You about five minutes. Five? Yeah. Our radio Go over. Just. And it's time for the Turner Construction Lightning Round. Uh, this is where we talk about a lot of things in a short period of time. And uh, Turner Construction makes this possible, makes it uh, possible for us to bring all this information to you. Turner is the number one builder nationally for healthcare, commercial education, and pharmaceutical manufacturing. And Turner Construction um, just really is involved in the community. Um, they are involved with more than 30 community organizations here in Omaha doing such a great job of not only making our built environment better, uh, but the whole culture and atmosphere of Omaha better. So thanks to Turner Construction for making this possible. Metropolitan Utilities District received a $10 million federal grant uh, just this week to replace the final 130 miles of aging cast iron natural gas lines. This is part of a multi-year effort to, rep- to replace these pipes um, throughout the city, some of which go back to the 1800s. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, it is amazing. And, and you think about uh, um, if there's one thing you don't want to have leak it's probably natural gas. So it's a very important, serious safety issue. And then you'd have to cut the gas. Good to know that uh, the city's making some progress with that. Lemon Tree Cafe has opened at 7614 Main Street in Ralston. It replaces Sojourn Cafe, which was at that site and closed a couple of weeks ago. I noticed on Omaha Food Lovers this morning on Facebook, uh, several people have already done unofficial reviews of Lemon Tree Cafe in Ralston. And so far, Sounds like it's a really good place. Might have to go give it a try. Manja Italiana. Awesome. Boy, tough to beat the food at Manja Italiana. Oh, delicious. That is so good. It's a trek to come, go pick it up or eat there, but that might change. Well, it might get a little easier, Trenton. You're right. Uh, they're currently, well, they are located at 7516 Irvington Road. They're going to stay there, uh, but they're considering opening a second location. Now, this would be takeout only. Uh, Manja says, but the business recently posted a poll on its fake Facebook page asking followers to vote for Elkhorn, Midtown, Southwest Omaha, Bellevue, Papillion, Ralston, or Millard for a second uh, takeout only location. I can tell you this, wherever they go, it'll be a hit. Absolutely. That stuff is amazing. And speaking of restaurant locations, uh, Saigon Surface, uh, Spencer... Morris and, and and I in our office just sold the building. Saigon Surface is closed. It's 14th and Farnham, about 2,650 square feet, fully turnkey turnkey kitchen. So whether you're a one-off restaurant or a chain, we've got a great location to 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 add right by the park and the new tower. Renovation is in full swing on Nebraska's first on the border Tex-Mex restaurant. It'll be in a former Pizza Ranch building at 8810 South 71st Plaza and Papillion. That's a little ways southwest of 72nd and Giles Road. Dallas-based On the Border has approximately 150 locations worldwide. Ross Dress for Less plans to open its sixth Omaha area store in a former Big Lots store space at 717 South 72nd Street. That's just east of Nebraska Furniture Mart. Opening will likely take place in the fall. And then uh, construction has started on a Take 5 car wash on the southeast corner of 99th and Blair High Road. 
Take 5 is based in Charlotte, North Carolina, hundreds of locations across the country. And while we're on the car wash subject, Club Car Wash has opened at 22nd and Capehart in Bellevue. Uh, based in Missouri, this company now has six Omaha area locations. Trenton, this is one that's uh, involving you a little bit. Um, it is called uh, uh, Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. It has opened in Council Bluffs, and you were involved in yeah, that Yeah, that's deal? a nice little strip center where Scooters is, and um, they took a space where uh, Great Clips was, and um, – Try at 30th and Broadway, and the street improvements on Broadway have really helped that area. Mission Avenue Barbecue, which is a Texas style barbecue restaurant, has opened at 900 West Mission Avenue in Old Town Bellevue. Again, early reports on Omaha Food Lovers indicate it's a pretty good place. Uh, the returns so far look pretty good for Mission Avenue Barbecue. The Mio has finally opened at 3001 South 32nd. Avenue in the former Los Solo Mio building. Uh, they opened uh, uh, just a little over a week ago. And um, I know a lot of people were really anticipating that because right. Los Solo Mio was one of the most beloved restaurants. This has some dishes, I understand, that honor the heritage of Los Solo Mio, but the owners of this new place, the Mio, point out, hey, we are only, uh, we are our own Italian restaurant. We're not just uh, a reincarnation. I can't wait to go there. I haven't been there yet. Yeah, we need to we need to get down there and, and give that a try. And then the uh, the Puerto Rican restaurant across the street uh, from the Mio, I've heard is pretty darn good as well. And then finally, the music is playing, so got to hustle. Home Goods will open its Shadow Lake Town Center store Thursday. That'll be their fourth metro area location. That's it for this week. I'm Jeff Beals. And I'm Trenton Maggot. You've been listening to Grow Omaha, brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center, D&M Roofing and Siding, and Turner Construction. We'll chat with you next week at 9 o'clock right here on News Radio 1110 KFAB. If you like this video, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And remember, Grow Omaha is not just media. This is a mission. We are trying to build up Omaha and make it an even better place. We can only do that with your help. Share this video with your friends, neighbors, and family.